This week on the Grind Waterfowl TV, staff members Ricky Hart and Bill Wilroth get covered up with mallards on South Dakota's Missouri River. Later in the episode, we travel to the Prairie Pothole Nesting Grounds of North Dakota to showcase some of Delta Waterfowl's latest research. It's a lifestyle for the rough and rugged kind. The tougher the game, the longer the pain, the better the ride. We do what we can to stay ahead Cause the modern world wants us left for dead You better believe as long as we breathe The sun's gonna rise We dig real deep, try a little harder Buckle down tight, go a little farther So we can look back and be proud of what we've done Sometimes we gotta work under the gun Don't sweat the battle, make sure the war's won Keep on keeping on, cause the bottom line It's a labor of love we call the grind The Grind is brought to you by Canadian Waterfowl Supplies Decoys and gear for marsh and field Lucky Duck Premium Decoys Masters of Deception Dakota Decoy Premium Gunning Decoys for Demanding Hunters Wild Ear Custom Fit Hearing Enhancement and Protection Rio The official ammunition of The Grind Waterfowl TV Pro Drive Shallow Water Outboards Authentic Wyoming High Mountain Seasonings Sitka Specialized Outdoor Wear and Equipment Delta Waterfowl the Duck Hunters Organization, and these fine sponsors. Every year we try and get some of our guys drawn in the South Dakota Lottery so that they can get a hunting license and come out and hunt the Missouri River with us. And last year we were lucky enough we got Ricky Hart from the Lucky Duck. Ricky's dad and Paul Waite from Delta Waterfall all drew successfully. So we brought them all in and the hunting was spectacular. We fought high winds, there were plenty of ducks. <laughs> but we fought 30, 35 mile an hour steady winds and it's tough to decoy ducks in that kind of wind. They, they'd bomb you, you might get one good shot at them but they were gone. One of my most favorite places to hunt, and it's not because we always have successful hunts there, but it's also because of the people that I get to hunt with. I've known Bill since uh, he started Dakota Decoy, and we've built a great friendship, but it's South Dakota, believe it or not, and uh, we go into the marsh, and South Dakota is a very unique place, and, and even as a non-resident, I, I really don't take it for granted by any means. They have a draw there. Um, and I don't usually get drawn every year. Uh, it's usually every other year. I, I do put in every year in hopes of going out there and, and hunting with Bill and Pat, but uh, you know, uh, my dad and I, we always make a trip whenever we get drawn because we put in as a group together. Um, and, and you know, it seems like year after year, they're getting to be more and more people coming out there, but uh, it's, a, it's truly a unique place. The wads and mallards are exceptional. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot to be offered there and, and hunting with Bill and Pat and cooking in the blind and, and sharing the memories and having my dad come along and 
You had Paul Wade out there, and uh, you know we had some windy days, and, and you know we shot a few ducks every day. The birds started pushing back up the river, and just those wads of mallard. It's one of the places where you can truly highball at a duck and they start breaking down. And you think that they're too high to call at and everybody laughs when you, know, you hear the hail call start ringing, but it really works and it's an, an experience that I can't have in any other place and to share it with the people that are there is, is truly memorable. There's very few spots in the United States where you can actually say you are calling ducks. Ducks res that ducks actually respond to. And the Missouri River, we're very fortunate, is one of those spots. Uh, it's a spot where you can see just little specks up in the sky that's a wad of ducks, and you just start wailing on them, almost like a contest routine, highballing them. And it's incredible. You can, all of a sudden, one duck will hear you and listen, he'll break down, and he'll bring the whole mob with us. And Paul Wade got to witness that a little bit, because he's, he's a Wisconsin boy. Uh, he doesn't get to witness ducks being broke down like that very often. He was truly amazed that we could call some of the ducks that we were able to call in. I think what makes it very unique about ducks in a water setting versus ducks in a field setting is simply that when ducks are coming to a field and you find that field and you're on the X, they're coming there to eat. They're hungry. They want to be there. They've been there. On water, it may not necessarily be the case. A lot of calling, the way your setup is, your hide. There's so many more factors that go into water hunting. Again, it's a very unique place. It helped me become a better duck caller, learn how to call at ducks better, um, and sometimes not even call ducks because that's, you know, sometimes they, they don't want to hear it. So it's a very unique place, and I've learned a lot about waterfowl just in hunting South Dakota. Without the efforts of organizations such as Delta Waterfowl, this country would be in trouble. We, we, honestly, we wouldn't have ducks right now. Uh, very important as a hunter, get involved. Uh, whatever you have to do, go to a Delta dinner, uh, go online, they have giveaways all the time. Just get, get involved. I mean, we need organizations like this. Without Delta, DU, another good project to get involved with, we would not have ducks. So I think the great connection between the grind and the Delta waterfowl is that 
Delta Waterfowl is uh, the hunter's organizations. You know, while they're conservationists, they're also all hunters. Uh, we hunt with them every year and we enjoy hunts. Uh, but the most important thing of it, again, alludes back to the conservation piece and why it's so important as waterfowlers that we, that everybody donates, or whether it's their time or their money or whatever they do, that's the education piece that we're trying to bring to you guys and help you understand that without this conservation, we don't have the wonderful sport of waterfowl. <laughs>
But when we were nest searching, we started to see that, you know what, the ducks are concentrating in the great fields of cover. But instead of trapping a township, we said, pick the 20 best fields, great fields of nesting cover where the ducks come from all sorts of areas and, and concentrate in that field and protect those. And what we found out is that works really well. In this field that, that I'm sitting uh, next to, it's a 320 acre field. And in a couple of recent years, we've had four to 500 nests in this one field. And last year, Buck had 67% nest success. So our trapper, a guy named Buck, uh, was so effective that we had phenomenally high nest success. We see predator management expanding as, as we focus more and more on what are we getting for our duck dollars. So one of the things we've done is some cost comparisons, and nothing approaches predator management in terms of cost effectiveness. So we suspect that What's going to happen in the future is, is duck hunters are going to become aware of what they're spending their money on. It doesn't do any good to protect that wetland if we're not producing any ducks from it. So let's protect the wetlands, secure the habitat base, and then let's make sure that the eggs hatch and the ducklings survive. We'd like to expand. We, we believe that there are countless sites across uh, the Dakotas alone where we could employ a trapper and really improve nest success. We believe it's even more important when habitat programs like CRP are declining. We have less cover, higher, ne higher nest predation, and so it's more important that we get out there and manage the predators. Delta Waterfowl is the Duck Hunters Organization, a leading conservation group with origins dating to 1911. Headquartered in Bismarck, North Dakota and Winnipeg, Manitoba, Delta Waterfowl has developed several key programs, including predator management, hen houses, and first hunt, all of which are based on sound science. Delta works to produce ducks, conserve breeding duck habitat, enhance duck hunting opportunities, and ensure the continuing tradition of duck hunting in North America. So in areas where we don't have a lot of grass, um, or what grass we have is in patchy, you know, kind of remnant patches, we need programs basically that, that can work in those areas to make them productive. In the early 90s, you know, just about everybody was looking for solutions for the duck issues. And so uh, that search for, for programs that could effectively help ducks led Delta to the hen house. Uh, in 1991, uh, one of our board members brought the idea of a hen house to, to Delta, and a couple of our hen house gurus installed uh, about 100 hen houses near Minidosa, Manitoba. Since that time, Delta's had about eight research uh, studies on hen houses, including mine in the early 2000s. Um, we studied them throughout the Prairie Pothole region and also in other areas like Ontario and the Great Lakes, uh, Western Pennsylvania, Colorado. And in general, if there's, if there's a significant breeding mallard population there, they do work, they do get used by ducks, and nest success has almost universally been very high. In fact, in some areas, you know, it's been over 90% nest success. When you compare that to a, to a landscape such as this where you don't have much grass and nest success might be 10 to 15 percent in a nest in the grass, a hen house could be very valuable. So that research basically, all of that research led Delta to, to adopt hen houses as a program. And in, over the last five to six years, the program has grown. We install them in areas like this, where nest success is typically low in the, in the surrounding area, but there's still lots of wetlands, lots of, of semi-permanent wetlands that hen houses work the best in. These semi-permanent wetlands have water in just about every year, and that means that the ducklings hatched in them have some habitat. The other thing about hen houses is that they don't work if the wetlands are dry, so you need to put them in, in locations where there's uh, water in most years. Some of our most effective areas are actually in the parklands of Canada, and in the parklands, the water levels are, are typically fairly stable. As a result, they also have a fairly stable predator population, and nest success in those areas is really poor. We've uh, done upland nest searching for years there, over the last research study, a three-year research study, we found nest success in the, in the grass for mallards was about 2%. Um, but because there's so many wetlands there, the ducks that are produced elsewhere continue to return to that area because it's so, it has so many good wetlands. So our hen house program there has grown to over 3,000 hen houses. Nest success in hen houses there is over 60%. And over 80% of the hen houses in Minidosa get used by a mallard every year. We're quite proud of the program there and we continue to grow our, our program in the parklands of Canada. Our goal for the hen house program over the next three years is to install 7,000 new hen houses. 
But our ultimate goal is to uh, install a, about 120,000 hen houses with the goal of producing 250,000 extra mallards each year. And we think that this will make an impact in these areas where we're not getting production currently and, and duck hunters will be able to, to, to benefit from that you know, increased production. Delta works hard to be the voice of the duck hunter. Delta's network of chapters and volunteers serves as the eyes, ears, and impactful voices to secure positive outcomes for duck hunters on local issues. This network of passionate waterfowl hunters make a formidable team on behalf of the duck hunter. Visit our website, www.thegrindwaterfowl.com, where you will find past episodes as well as tips and tactics from the boys here at The Grind. Follow The Grind on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.